डर सबको लगता है कला सबका सूखता है पर डर से डरोगे तो कुछ बड़ा कैसे करोगे तो ड्यू उठा और हिम्मत का घूट लगा एयरक्राफ्ट टू इन कमिंग वी एफ हिट इन एयर पॉकेट Mountain Dew, डर के आगे जीत है Howdy people, hola amigos, konnichiwa, welcome everyone, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Score a College Gaming Club. It's yet another day, and with every rising sun, new rays fall on the surface of the earth. Just like that, we are at the new arena. This time, it's going to be the Bennett University, and of course. You know that Score College Gaming Club is powered by Gigabyte. Accessory partner is Belkin Gaming Headset partner. It's going to be Sony in Zone Top Notch Gear with Casper Sky as a cyber security partner. Perfect security out there and the beverage partner, the tastiest Mountain Dew. And with that, guys, we're going to move on to the prize pool and the names of the teams, and that will be announced to you by none other than the most amazing Edge. Well, that was uh, that was quite an um, introduction, to be honest. I mean, once again, thanks for the warm welcome. But yeah, we are back once again. Score College Gaming Club. Once again, talking about the prize pool, we are gonna be having ten thousand rupees yet again as the entirety of the prize pool. Now, first place winner, they'll be taking away five thousand rupees, and second place, they give themselves three thousand. So both these teams, they have at least three thousand already secured to themselves. Third place winner will be getting 1500, and the MVP of the finals will be getting 500 rupees all to himself. So this is going to be interesting because, yeah, I mean, getting the first prize is going to be, you know, the main motive. But that MVP is going to be where I'm going to be looking at. You know, who's going to be the one taking it on? But for now, let's take a quick look at the teams facing off today and the maps as well. They're going to be playing. It's going to be a best of three, and it is going to be Zaddy's versus. King Kong. Well, let's talk about the maps here first. We're going to be starting off on the map of Pearl. Well, Zaddy's are going to be on the attacker's app as King Kong. They are going to be on the defenders. And the second map, well, my personal favorite. We are going to be jumping on to the map of Bind. That is attacking again. King Kong on the defenders. And if it goes the distance, the decider is going to be split. Attacking once again will be Zaddy's. And defenders, well, King Kong, well, let's see if they can defend three times if it goes the distance once again. But I mean, I, I'm kind of confused here. Is it King? Is it supposed to be King Kong or is it supposed to be King Kang? You know, a shout out to maybe Kang Kang from EDG because I mean, he's amazing. So I, I feel like it's a shout out to him. I also think the exact same thing. And in this situation, I really feel like that, you know, these teams have just mutually decided, all right, let's play all these three maps in this specific order. You go for the attack, we go for the defense, and then let's see how well this goes. That's what I think might have happened. Or maybe I have some inside information. Who knows? But nonetheless, yes, the name King Kang definitely is going to have me on my tongue, man, because I am going to be extremely confused by pronouncing that. I might call it Kang Kang. I might call them King Kong. but all right, we're going to try and stick to King Kang and let's have a look at the roster for both of these teams. Pretty solid roster and that's a new thing that we've added and it looks actually amazing. I want some pictures of mine in the same. I mean, we have uh, we have the players here coming out from Zaddy's and King Kong. Mm. They are the, uh, not the IGNs, but it's just still decent. We have Satvik, Ratan, Saksham, Abhishek and Stressed from Zaddy's and from King Kong, we have Anuj, Prashant, Hussein, Shlok, and Karthik. Well, that's a five-man roster on each side. This is going to be an interesting matchup for sure. I'm still, I'm, I'm kind of confused. Maybe, maybe these are the IGNs. Well, never mind. Just as I say that they, nah. they are not the IGNs. 
of course. I mean, that's just the real names to get us a little more familiar with the faces, but it is going to be the map of Pearl. And every time I hear the word Pearl, one thing comes into my head, and the one thing is two controllers. Because you need two controllers to get that, you know, insane amount of area control, especially. And one of them has to be Viper, if you ask me. It has to be Viper. Agreed. You know, Viper, she used to be that agent who was extremely well known for being picked on Icebox as well as Breeze. And since both of those maps are actually out of the pool and with the addition of Harbor, we've seen that Harbor Viper comp on almost every other map. You call it Bind, you call it Pearl, you always see the Harbor Viper coming up and who other than Loud were the ones to bring that meta in. And we're going to see Choose that your coming agent. in this time, in this specific game. From King Kang. So I'm going to just enjoy that gameplay. Plus, I've been playing Sky as well recently. And I always hear the praises from my teammates. Mentioning how well I've flashed them. And how well the enemy got the opportunity to finish us off. Uh, let's hope that Trash does not show the same kind of gameplay. And of course, he will definitely be much better onto that. Talking quickly about these compositions. We have both the double controllers on each side. But it's an Astra Viper combo up against the Harbor Viper standard composition. So... I'm really liking the addition of Astra because the Cosmic Divide just gives you a lot of room to work with and without any noise going in towards the other side, you have that window of opening to play along so that you'd be able to, you know, somehow get that punish in onto your opponent. So just stop the uh, push that's coming in. So I think so Astra is a very nice addition in the comp. I mean, having the sky, as you said, you know, especially having that flash is so beneficial. Not only it flashes the enemies, it also give you, gives you the information that there is at least one enemy. You don't get the exact information, but it's still really good. But my only concern right now, once again, is that the defenders, they don't have a sentinel. Now, um, I, I feel like it's going to be a very heavily pushing comp. But if not, mm. if they decide to just play it back, if the attackers decide to play completely aggro, there's nothing that they can do because you can see already Sky already flashed up towards A main, getting that information on towards them, making sure that it's completely clear. And the mid control is where the fight's at. Everyone's at mid already. Regal being used. I see a casket being thrown away. And then the Beulah pushed them back. More. Indeed. So many utilities just being dumped up and noise being made. You know that the pistol around you are extremely strong Blinded. when all of you stick together. You know, apes strong together. I just wanted to put that meme reference in. I'm not calling anyone apes. Uh, but yes, that was a pretty good harbor wall coming up. Just Hailing stopping the entire here. push, forcing them to move ah. towards the art. And I think so. The defenders have the idea as the picks come in. Viper goes down in the hands of harbor, but the site is theirs. But they do not have any control apart from that. They have to move this one. There's going to be another fight taking. And Crash will be able to catch Space Walker out in the open without any gun in hand. That's a pick. Three for two now. So it is extremely problematic. King Kang though, still can go in for that retake. They have the numbers advantage. Now slowly moving in. One enemy remaining. Off. That's gonna Loud be a another great headshot. Wow, comes the clutch and the spray from the Why Frenzy. Yastra, good enough to finish one. him off. I never go no. A great round coming in from their side. Zadi with a baddie start. That was a great start. That is gonna be, you know, kicking up the momentum, kicking up I the should play some Astro well. Stars in this reality. Get them moving. A brilliant start, especially for the Astra as well. Those stars placement were just beautiful to begin off. And now, immediately we see a pause being called. And I'm not really sure if it's a technical pause or a tactical timeout. But regardless, it's going to give enough time for the defenders to think of a game plan. Because once again, as I said, having no sentinel means you need to do something different. You cannot play by textbook anymore. You don't have that agent to hold off sight. You need to make sure you push med at least. Or uh, maybe like B or A, if you ask me. But mid pushing mid would be the basic, uh, would be the more conventional way because the sky flash and the viper being there as well. You just use the snake bite, use the flash, get control of one side, maybe get a couple of kills, have that man advantage, and then play back. Because hmm. uh, it's it's better to hold off three players rather than five on the side if you don't have a sentinel. That is absolutely true, and you know. Um... I really feel like that in the piston round, the strategy, the strategy coming in from King Kang, it was pretty decent. Right they knew that they would right not be there. able to 
hard hold a site since they do not have a sentinel so they just decided to take a step back take space elsewhere to make sure that they have enough space enough room to work with for the retake and they were in a pretty solid position 3v2 retake in a pistol round they ideally in every scenario they should have won it out but they just gave those uh, 1v1s to the members of zaddies that was the reason why they came out on top just because of that awesome aim especially coming in from killjoy but uh, if you talk about strategy they had the perfect chance to actually get that pinch in onto the players of zaddies i really love their own position as well just taking space towards the back of the side towards the ct to make sure that they would be watching out both the openings coming in from the link as well as the main but uh, i think so that the key to victory for the defense for the side of King Kang is going to be the fact that they have to play in for those retakes. They've got a double initiator composition, double controller as well. So they can put those smokes up on those choke points, can also use those initiator utilities to make sure that, you know, they have enough room to work with, enough openings to create to get that retake. We're still waiting for the players to set everything up. Yep. I mean, at the end of the day, we, we know that it's a tech pause because of the VC issue. So everyone's going to be fixing everything up before we head on in this match. Because, I mean, the, the first engage and the fights that we just saw, it, it clearly shows how well coordinated these teams are and how solid their practices have been. I, it feels like I'm watching one of the best if not the best match in SCGC in a long while to be honest because we've seen quite a lot of one-sided matches only a few of them actually going all the way maybe in OTs but this one I, I personally feel that looking at the skill levels and uh, you know the strategies that these players are using I, I feel that this might actually go all the way to the OT I am expecting it to go to the OT so that's a good skin that's a solid skin of Frenzy. Hmm. Yeah, but not, not the knife. The Velocity Karambit. Oh, both of them have the Velocity Karambit. But, um, as you said, yeah, I mean, once again, right talking about skins, though. I mean, I I right usually there. feel like with the, the default Mad Black Randall, I am pretty much, um, let's say, dog crap. <laughs> uh, but when it comes to, uh, let's say, Reaver or any other skin, I, I feel like... But I don't know if it's only being a bit like multiple players or if it's just, you know, subjective. But it feels like with skins, I mean, regardless, some 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 have this with Prime, Reaver, Ion, whatever. But it feels like with skin, it feels like the aim and the spray is much smoother. Is it just me or is it everyone else? Put a Gaia in my hand and you'll see me almost acing in every second or third round that is actually true you give me a guy's vandal and it seems that i i have this one small window to work with and i can see it so Ooh. clearly that my aim just directly goes onto oh, their no. head or their uh, body so i have the idea of the recoil as well i don't know why that happens so that is one of the reason why i kind of feel i need to invest in guy's vandal but then i look at my rank drone 3 and i say never mind as well as my bank balance but i didn't want to mention that <laughs> But either uh, way, guys, we're just working really hard to fix the comms issue that the players are encountering. Please do not worry. We will begin the match extremely shortly. And in the meantime, you can just hit that like button and click on the subscribe button as well as follow us on our socials if you like us or like our blabbering because you'll be seeing a lot of us in the future as well. Oh, for sure. I mean, uh, this guy's amazing. Scared yet if you haven't. So you know, you know, follow him on Instagram. Well, it's the perfect time for you. I mean, we still have a we still have a pause. It's the perfect time for you to follow him on Instagram to check out. I mean, he does multiple things, not just casting. Trust me, he's been doing a lot of work in recent times. So make sure to check him out, and you can check me out on Instagram as well. It's Edge Monroe One Three O Six. Well, I do mostly casting. Pretty boring, but um, yeah, I hope to entertain you every time you see me on the screen. And and that's how you catch a liar white handed, but. Uh, either ways <laughs> again uh i mean let's go back to the fact uh, about the no sentinel composition right uh, i saw a match i was actually seeing a match right now basically a breakdown of that match between uh, 100 thieves and sentinels and ironically sentinels had no sentinel in their composition so they were basically then playing this comp on bind wherein they had absolutely no sent they had a couple of initiators if i'm not wrong uh, double initiator double controller composition probably and they were on the attacking half so 
they had to make sure that they all were holding every other angle in order to you know control that map since they had absolutely no tool to watch the backstab they had to leave at least one or two people on those specific points of map wherein they could grab information for them and that is something i feel king kang would have to do when they would be on the attacking half in the pearl because you look at the points where you need to watch out from firstly it's the aiming you always have to have an eye of that and then you're talking about the entire mid from art as well as from double doors and then you also have to look at the connector that's going in towards the b main so there are just so many rotation points that you know the defenders could have or maybe the attackers could have that you actually need to watch out so not having a sentinel definitely could be disadvantageous unless you are pretty well practiced with your entire comp of the harbor viper along with a double initiator that you are able to use those utilities and peek in the perfect window to get those picks to get that timing right and it will end your own favor right there what do you think about that I mean, uh, first things first, as you pointed out, you know, sentinels playing with no sentinels. That I feel like you, once again depends, right? If you are a team that have been that has been right together there. for a really long time, and if you are a team that can pull it off, once again, uh, no disrespect to any of the players, but the caliber of the players in the sentinels team is way higher than the players here. At least I'm, I'm guessing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I might be wrong, but I'm guessing. So people, I mean, if these if these uh, players have been together for a really long time and they've perfected the the combo of these five agents, well, then I think they can make it work. But I highly, highly, highly doubt that. And playing with no sentinel, and even if they had two duels, I would have actually understood the composition of the uh, the agents here. But since it's not even that, it's a double initiated, double controller, and a single duelist. You need Placing to be on point box. and synch very coordinated and synchronized with your team to enable that jet to go into the side and give you that space to work with. Because once that jet is gone, I mean, yeah, you still have the wingman to go for the plant, uh, you know, with the help of Cove. But if that jet goes down without, you know, giving you space, the round is done for immediately, especially on the attacking half. That is absolutely correct. And yes, of course, everyone forgets about that extra member that Gecko always brings in the room, right? Wingman. We love to see the wingman plants. We love to see the wingman diffuse. So they have to utilize him perfectly. Plus, he can also be used to clear those spaces. Um, but I really feel that Skydog would do a much better job in that case. And uh, yes, it's just as you've said, if they lose Jet in their attacking half, then that's gonna put them in a very awkward position where they have absolutely no sight entry potential and they have absolutely no one to just break through that those defensive lines and kind of force or uh, you know scare them for a pinch coming in that to just onto the side so jet needs to play extremely safe or i would say or maybe just has to get the perfect timing in those executes but for now we're just gonna see those players having fun rotating Give me some motion sickness with just the screen and showing off those amazing skins, which I'm just too broke to buy. But yeah, we are, we are still waiting, guys. We're just fixing the issue. You know, good things come to those who actually wait around. That's what Bennett does not say in the Genshin Impact, but I just twisted the dialogue a little bit. But yes, patience and you will see the reward as well. And nonetheless, Again, 1-0 to zero score line. The pistol round was also pretty solid coming in from both of these teams. And it came down to that aim because, you know, your strategy could be 10 on 10, but you also need to get that aim right. As soon as you get that flick perfect, you are basically doing the 60% of the work in the middle of the round. So I think so. that's the kind of scenario we're going to witness. It's going to come down to those aim duels, those aim fights. And I am kind of thinking that maybe if the momentum is in the favor of zadis they would be able to snowball out of control it could be highly possible because we know it how important the momentum is you could be leading nine to three and then the curse hits in the momentum shifts to the opponent and they end up closing the game 14 to 12 as happened to me last night Oof, i haven't played all in so long so i mean i i can't I, I can't. I won't say that I can't relate to it because I've had uh, 
games 10-2 that I've lost and 2-10 that I've won as Here. well. So, so I feel you. But let's see if that's going to be the case today in this matchup as we are going to be like finally after a very long time. One kill. Another one. There you go. Using that snake bite to get that in. What, a vulnerability is going to be the game plan, as I said. Use that. You have. Doesn't matter what weapon you have. Even a stinger is like three hits if I'm not wrong. Two to three hits, and you will definitely get a kill. You need to make sure you use that viper snake bite. I got enough time to go the into fullest. the astral fall. Well, it's two to zero right now. Let's see if the defenders can get the full buy round, or are the hackers going to get the bonus? That round was over before the timeout even ran out for the technical timeout. Like, come on, man. That was so very fast, so very quick. Both the teams had absolutely the same idea. Let's go on, aggress towards the B main. Let's take the fight there. I understand the ideology coming in from uh, King Kang. Because, Here. of course, they do not, did not have the weapon advantage in the previous round. But for now, we're going to see some reverb action coming in from one shot. In the meantime... On Kuss, spots out a couple of players. That actually wins out on the trade. One shot has fallen. This side is absolutely open. That flash is going to give a decent amount of information, but the trade flash coming in. Double dose have been compromised. Two people still holding strong in towards that dark connector. Snake bite comes in, but the dark flash vulnerable. One shot might be in trouble. And again, that, that was not exactly a split. They just threaten a split, and all of them are just controlling the entirety of the mid. Just look at that. Staying strong, staying put. They know. That still the site is not completely clear. One mm -hmm. way of Astra. Block of the Heaven. Forcing Harbor and Wife for both of them back. They're still not executing. They, they're waiting for those cooldowns to go out. So that they have those utilities at hand. True, 35 seconds on the clock. The time is running out. They have to come into a side and it is going to be bait. They do have uh, the Harbor. 30 seconds left. Uh, oh, and he gets one oh. together. He does. That's a oh. three. Oh, another down. That was a really good headshot. He knew the position and was able to finish him off. Jump peak spots no one. So he knows there's no one at the main. He can stop one the progress in. That's going to be another smack onto the face. Harbour with three picks in this round. And it's just Sky remaining. Could be knifed to death. That's ouch. I feel like he's uh, disconnected in between. I think he was disconnected in between. Oh no. Yeah, they have in connectivity issues. Jeez. Oh, but I feel like damage was already inflicted if I'm not wrong. So the rollback will not be possible. This is kind of hmm. unfortunate, but I think attackers should be okay with it because of the fact that it was just a bonus. And they still got a couple of uh, frags there to, you know, compensate for the disconnection. But it is unfortunate. We are going to be heading into another timeout. Technical, of course, as you see a multi multiple player disconnection there. But yeah, defenders, uh, I don't know, should we call it lucky? Should we just call it Harbour's um, good positioning? Either way, get the first on the board. And now the attackers, they have to think of a different game plan because this one did not work out. Indeed, but I guess they have enough time to work on it now. They've got the, you know, for the defenders, they've got the reckoning available. So, they would be able to go in for the retake as well. And in the previous round as well, we did see that they just stayed put. They made sure that they're not pushing onto the site. They kind of wanted Zadis to take control of the site so that they'd be able to go in for an easy retake. And that is exactly what they did. They let them take control. We did see ULT moving forward towards those boxes to go in for a default long plant. And he was just stopped in his way because Radiant was right there on his harbor, just getting that aim onto the head. And that was a very good hit shot. Strafing, you know, that strafe track was absolutely brilliant. And that is their game plan. That is their plan. So, you know, this fight is basically going to come down to after plant positioning. How well Zadis are in their post plant because those positions are going to be important as we know no one's gonna hold sight on to the side of king kang so they'll basically have a free site after a first pick and then they would have the opportunity to have you know move, move around take more space probably i think so they should be more proactive in those post plans try to take even more space to cut off the options of rotations from king kang and that would be the key to victory Probably.
Probably. You're right. That reckoning could be coming into play. Huge. I mean, you can either use it to. Uh... Oh. I guess we uh... are gonna be rolling back. Yep. We are gonna have a rehost of the lobby. We're gonna do that way too quickly, guys. So. Yep, that's gonna be a rollback of one round, not the lobby. Jeez. Well, that damage right. was already inflicted, was it not? I guess so, but again, the calls in the hands of management. We've got no that say in it, so yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have the rollback coming in, but yes, that was just one round, and we did see how it could have gone towards either side, coming down to that aim diff. We know that the retake is gonna come in, but what kind of strategy is gonna be coming in this round? That's going to be the question. It seems that all five of Zardis are just right keeping there. towards the A side. We know that they love to make noise onto the main and then move towards mid to go in for a split. That's been happening for the past two rounds and technically three, which we've just rolled back. So it is possible that they can go probably for the same kind of play. Ooh, let's see if that is going to be the case. As a round rollback, you come into play. The defenders might not be feeling really good. Because they are going to be the ones at um, a loss there. Because they are going to be going back to zero. It's still a blue round coming in. It's still a bonus coming in. But here's the thing. The attackers now can do a different thing. They can change up the strat. Right? They can't use the same strat. Yes, it almost worked out. If a couple of players were disconnected, Right there. It almost worked out, and if no, if no one was disconnected, I think right it would have worked out. But either way, they right know there. what defenders are doing this round. And you can see, last time, they were all towards mid, going towards B. And this time, they're all towards A with a fake star, with a fake nebula Here. on B. This is going to be calling in for a lot of rotation for sure. Hmm. That is true, but again, it just clearly seems to be the default hold coming in for the side of King Kang. We can see a couple of players towards the link connector towards that B side. One in Arts holding that angle. One on each side. So if in case Zadis decide to fully burst onto one of those sides, you know that one player could be in right trouble. There. Yes, the rotation might come in from the links, right but it might not actually be on time. But right well, finally, we're gonna jump back in the third round of the game, guys. The bonus for Zadis. Full buy. For King Kang. Yes, Here's the footstep. Our wall goes up. Now let's move towards the back of the side to stop the aggression. We got crashing. the dog in. Cascade coming in. Right, flash raided. I know the positioning. Plants gonna come down. Stop! Not. That was a. That was a great fam. Reckoning comes in. They do not have the sky. Hit perfect. That's the spray down. Hava yet again goes for another pick. Three versus four. Three versus four actually. And then pushed all the way back. The aggressive. Enjoy the spray. Good. Hava finally traded. That guardian. Seems to be pretty solid in his hand. 1v2 now. But the spike. Not quite sure. Why the push? Far from their reach. Oh, the sound cue. Yeah, that's gonna Must give the sound. He sure but he's know waiting. It. Yeah, here's the footstep. He probably has an idea. They've already taken the spike, but wants to just 30 stay seconds put left. To get the confirmation. 2v1. Beast Boy actually has a fair amount of HP, 125. He should be able to get that retaken because Astra is barely breathing. All he needs to take care of Spike is planted. Harden on the Killjoy. Bablu gets the plant in. They are not exactly in a crossfire, but Killjoy is definitely putting some utils to make sure there's no one coming in from backstab. So there's only one thing to be dropping in. Angle is held, and Astra gets the head. Third round. And that to a bonus converted is definitely putting the economy in snowball. That round, um, I have no clue what happened. Now I don't know whose call that was, but you already have the side for yourself. You have the spike there. You have the reckoning pushing them back. Take control. You almost had the high tide there as well. But then they all just push one Let's by one straight across it of Killjoy, and well, he's not gonna be missing with the Guardian. 
Three to zero, they have the lockdown. This should be a number three round. But as well, going towards the end, Baba wants to push oh. in. He will get that immediate and kill. Oh. Yeah, he, he, had had to <laughs> he had to protect himself because his own sky flashed him. <laughs> Toxin screen down. It was a perfect flash, forcing out one more utility. But again, Jet has creeped up all the way towards the B side. Was gonna stop any further push coming in. Smokes are out as well. They should have an idea. But the word from Viper. This could be everything if he catches the timing right. And the angle is held by Harbor though. They're just staying put. VLT could make the play of his lifetime. Finally finds him. Gets the head as well. Harbor was watching the angle. Good effort. Should be able to catch him out. No, VLT with yet another pick. And he is the spy carrier. No, he's not the spy carrier though. It's Jet. Sheesh. He gets two awesome picks there. Second one as 30 well seconds through. left. It's still a 4v3 though, and not just Three that. Down. It's still a heavy weapon advantage as VLT. He, he gets himself a triple. Last player oh, standing. Rush gets one, but that's it. He immediately gets taken out. That Guardian on Kilgore is still doing a lot of a lot of damage. 10 seconds Unshot. left. Spike planted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, on the backstab. Uh, fair enough. It was kinda a force down probably. They had a hero rifle invested in with a couple of specters. But this should have enough credits for a full buy and yes, the operator now finally comes into play. This could be the round that can change the tide in favor of King Kang. They can probably get a few picks here and there. But I personally think looking at the amount of presence that has been shown in mid for so many times, uh, maybe they could decide and pull the operator in towards that mid but still. Just wants to go in default, wants to hold the entire B long with that top. Hmm. Holding. Oh, does not take the one shot. What well, no, he play? does, and he misses it. Unfortunate. It's 4 0 to have to the goal line as well. As now the 12 players are really used to getting into the side. Not too bright for me to play as well. They get the information onto one of the players, but that's it. Look at Chet. Taking up a lot of damage. Thank you, you should run. and Deep. Very bad as well. But the Rego will not be coming into play as the attacker skills are. We'll be initiating the lockdown. They have to push back. But one shot has a great angle, has to wait, but he does not. He does not want to risk that. Because it's going to Drew and finally the trailblazer on the other side gonna catch Jet in towards that back side. With them playing at the long, so this operator could be extremely detrimental. They need to take care of the Jet Dawn towards the back. It's Harbor, they can kill Joy. Oh, and the trades come in and all one enemy in remaining. favor of King Kang. Judge in hand, he's moving forward, has the idea, and the spray down is there. Bro Dep taking Space Walker out, and they will get King the defuse in, stealing it with the skins. That's one of my favorite guys, Vengeance. And they finally get the opening, the first round, and they did not lose very much onto that, just one person. So they still have a pretty solid economy to work with. They will be able to get that full buy. As you said, they already won four rounds. Uh, you know, they did lose a couple of players here and there, but that's about it, right? So the economy is still coming into play. Uh, one shot. He's struggling right now. He needs to make sure that operator is put to good use because he's sitting on zero kills, and. Jet right there. with an operator can usually hold on to one of the sites pretty easily. Most Ooh. often, it's going to be B, but this time, he's going to be setting up A. And as I said, the mid control is not being taken, so the attackers decide to take it. Once again, Viper is going to be using both of his snake fights. I am not really uh, sure why. Did he hear anyone? What was the play here? He probably might have an idea that there could be mid doors push, but I don't think so that... The couple of snake bites were necessary. You could have thrown just a one way towards those mid doors to control that space. But it given him a lot more room to work with and post plant white I've got your to trail. Kind of push back the aggressors, but you can have the secret in place and make it die. And that's the big oh my goodness, that was such a beautiful peek coming in. Perfect play, beast boy taken Spike out. Planted. One more has to play towards yeah. the back side, gets the pick. Take wins out that jet duel. Also spots the other player, gets the smoke in, reckoning Here. is there. Should be pushing them backwards. Oh, his aim is on the head, fifth the shot. How is there to stop him in his tracks? 
They're still all bursting down. Cove comes in. Refuse is gonna go in. They have to spray it down. Astra still in the actual bomb. Gets the gravel in. Stops the refuse. Frash still picks Astra off. So no more Astra utility. Casket is out there. Wiper. Oh, With that. Oh, uh, melee is spray down. Comes in. Got the molly pick off. But still. That's some final shots being fired. One shot needs to save his operator. Probably will be able to do so. Now the loss of four players, they get their second round. But still, that was a pretty solid defuse coming in. And I believe his lineups were decent, but the plant was not for those default, if I'm not wrong. I guess so. I think uh, minor miscommunication there. But um, um, either way, I'll take everything they'll take two to four right now. Viper does have the Viper pit available on both the... Both the sides, the Blaze Storm is available for the Jet as well. But look at this play once again. Jet is a little pushed up, but guess what? Harper is in a great spot. Like no one, no one spots him. He's going to get multiple kills here, but one shot takes a shot and it's on Facebook. But that's the Flash of Gone. Well, I can, I said, no one suspected Harper to be there. He will get the kill and immediately uses the high tide. Absolutely. Such a brilliant use of utility. Perfect possible time. You know you've got the spike. Pushing the high tide up to make sure there's no one aggressing. And this is the best chance for them to actually go in for their own defensive wipe of it. You can just use the wipe of it on towards that spike to make sure no one's pushing onto that. Have a massive advantage. If Hornock can kill job wins out that duel. The other side of the map and spray down is there. Jet gets Harbor, but finally is traded by one shot. They get yet another round. Finally, the momentum shifting in their own favor now. This operator is to be more threat than expected for the side of Sadis. Zaddy's now being a baddie and taking up those numbers, taking up those rounds back in their favor. We, as I said, we were waiting for the operator to come into play and no way that's come up. Especially with the jet. Here. Kuna as the melee. It looks good. Five man push towards B. How is way. this gonna come up as Flash? Will they coming in? Guiding light being guided and will be getting information that there are multiple players on towards B. No wall used yet. So they don't have exact information but jet will be going in for the rotation. There you go. Wall comes up. Viper. <laughs> Trying to be the hero here, but has to be very careful. There is a wall invested in them as well. Again, they really damage. But the attacking Viper utilizes his ultimate, but doesn't really matter as he still gets taken down. Indeed, and Prodeb, oh, oh, he can be in the out. That's gonna be another good trade out. I mean, Astra tries to make something out of that. Gets two of them. Out. Almost got that in a doable position, but the spike is out Found of reach. And... Down. Ah, he knows there's someone on the back stab. Could have got the timing right, but the high the cascade is there. That's gonna be the gecko flash. Utility is dumped up and killjoy taken down. You did That's good. another round. Even Viper's pit was invested. Could not get the value out of it. I was expecting. King Kang to actually go in for those retakes, but the way that they are flooding in towards that site, perfectly matching the time of the execute, just overwhelming the entire team of baddies, that has been brilliant. Right there. Right there. Right there. Sudden, some new surge in the game plan. This Harbor and Jet combo has been working phenomenally. Both of these players sticking together. Trying to take up these aggressive positions, and as you can see, they were once again pushed up towards A main, but the play is towards us this time. As the buy is not that good, they will still be approaching and taking control of the out area. Beast Boy, did he get the kill? No, Astra overwhelmed to the dash as well as Jet gets the trade onto Pro Dev, who just took down Astra, but it's still another controller still alive. It's still at three versus four. No ultimates available for any of the players here, but the positioning is good. The attackers now slowly making their way towards A as they split up. But the two dangerous players on the side of defenders, both of them are towards A, including the operator player. Indeed, but again, what to do when you're pinching him from two different sides? Look at the spawn control. It's also going to go in favor of Adi. That's the op shot coming in. Spike one shot. Down we'll take the spike down. They know. One now have an idea. And Harbour with the perfect positioning. Prash gets space walker as well. That's the look out of picture. And they've got the full control of Spike. 
how quickly this round is turned left. head over heels. It's immaculate. I thought that this could be the perfect point. It was a 5v3. And they had the entire mid control. Oh. Could have gone anywhere. The spray for Harbour is good. Will be able to get Killjoy out. And gets their team in the lead finally in this game. It was a 0-4 in the beginning. And now the last five rounds have gone for King Kang. A 5-4. And they're in the advantage. Well, they're getting round after round after round. Thank you, Five. On the side of attackers now, they still have the cost to divide which I feel like will be utilized this round to maybe secure another one. I want to see if they have any ultimates close by, uh, you know, any, anytime soon. On the side of defenders though, they do have the trash, which is going to be coming in huge later on. Sky using his flash once again towards B to get the information, knows that no one's there. Harbor will be safe from the trailblazer. Sky not expecting him or wait a second. That was actually a brilliant flash coming in and they kind of took a jet there but they did not know the harbor was in the picture as well so might as well get someone since they dashed out of the harm's way still trying to get the timing right three more seconds has to run out of the lockdown range we'll be able to... again oh face walk what a timing by one shot spike planted and that was a nasty shot right on the face three v2 Boxes now after the pro dep out so no threat coming in from the link at least. And they've got a very good post plant position. No space to work with for Sky as well as Jet. Have to use the utils to clear out that space. Also have to get the utilities Last out. Doesn't grab well as well as poke out of the picture along with the snake bite. He has to hold the space. Little can he do as Astra picks the third in the round. Finally, the score no is back to 5-5, five, five, going back and forth. That is exactly what we were talking about back during the time outage. Yeah, they're not gonna let it slip. They're definitely not gonna let it slip. And uh, the push coming in this time, once again, as, as we've talked about it, they need to keep switching up things, right? And they did the same thing twice, and this time, well, they got punished. So I'm expecting a different play this time around, but if not, then we all know what's gonna happen again. It's 5-5, five, five. can they make it 6-6? Six, six? I wanna see a close match. I wanna see this going into overtime, to be honest. Concealment. Yeah, I even mean, I don't think that's going to happen, but that's gonna be how we're going in for two amazing picks. He even though the opening was for Zadis, they have absolutely no space to work with. Got enough time, though, but the Seekers have been sent. They want to go in for this full execute onto the other side. Guiding Light splashes them out. Haba has to go back. Should have an idea that someone spike planted. Probably lurking behind the space they've been holding in. That's gonna be the reckoning user. Should give the position of Last two of them, standing. but they do not know about Space Walker who was picked off. They still managed to get all of them. Four kills for Harbor. Just rushing onto that side and rushing onto that diffuse. It's another great round. Great defense from King Kang. The adjustment coming in. They just made sure. That they take that A main fight, they get those Last switch. round before the switch. And the moment Don't they got them, anything. Last chance to use let stuff. the plant go in only to rush up the side from all the spaces. They had every single slot to work with and they utilized it perfectly. Very good. They played that to perfection. Using the trash as well, but now. The attackers, they need to pull it back and make it a 6-6. Six, six. Astra, Astra only having the ultimate. Viper having the Viper Spear. I think if you utilize it pretty early into the round, there's nothing that can be done. I can that. He doesn't out. Oh, I have no idea how he survived that. Very careful here. He's looking for a harbor. There you go. Space Walker. Check that corner this time around. Make sure that they do not see the corners unchecked. As they have to be very cautious as the dizzy. Gets two players, but doesn't really matter. Wait a second, Harbor got a kill with the shot. Oh, one shot. And who goes down? Two player over and fail. Can't get any pick, but still out is three of them. Oh, three of four KO. There's no possession of BNT. And that's a 7 5 half going in favor. That's switching sides. It's probably the third reckoning in the round. Occupational hazards aside, I do love how much I travel. Man! He's going 
22 and 8. Holy smokes! He's going bonkers, man. He's going literally bonkers. He's single handedly left in the space of the team. Astro on in the on the other side. 177 doing a really good job as well, but once again, now comes the harder part. Pushing with just death as your duelist, and at the same time, someone has to make sure that they watch flank. Having no sentinel means the flank is gonna be at the back of the heads. Oh. Yeah. Or is it or exactly, minute? and again, that just means that they would have to hold those spaces, hold those angles. How about making the noise towards B side? Should probably draw the attention of a couple of people, but we can clearly see the amount of importance being shown to mid. If this double push from R come into play, the timing is right there. If can't this harbor off, that's one person down. The vulnerable will be taken down, but the pack is not clear. Pro Dep will be surprised by it. Awesome. In fact, that was a good flash. They knew the position still. It's one shot. Who gets taken down? Spike planted. The defensive jet one wins out remaining. in that duel. The spike has been planted though, but the spray down is there. Jet gets the third. It's the erase. That's another spray from Frenzy. We did not see that happening, but still. Crash gets Killjoy out. He should be able to take him down, and the knife is there to do the thing and seal the deal. The defuse will be there, and the round. Is gonna go yet again to Zardis, the second pistol in the game. Putting it back. Yes, the pistol, seven to six. They need every single round for here and after once again. The defenders, it One is second, their time. To I gotta shine, visit the Astral to play some Especially because of the fact that they have a kill zone. But you gotta give it to you side of attackers as well. They did a really good job before the side switch. They got seven. I actually thought they might just Placing get four, if not three. Placing swarm grenade. But they actually got seven rounds on the defensive half without a sentinel. That was a really Turn good up. job. But most of it was done by Harbour. So I still feel like they need a little bit of practice. But yeah, that was a really good half coming in from them. But now it's an eco. It's not an eco actually. My bad. It's actually a force by coming in. Or at least from Harbour. Yeah. We have a spectre being picked up here. No one would probably anticipate it, but one more thing they would not anticipate is Jet holding such an aggressive angle. He could get the play. He could get the timing. What? Harbour wins that trade out? Impossible. Jeez, that could have been a wide peak probably, but again, we're seeing the side execute coming in. VLT picks off Pro Dep. So that's Viper v Viper Duel won by VLT. High Tide is still up. They do not have any room to work with. Cascade's gonna come in. It's one shot though, taking care of the person each time. No more CT pressure. Killjoy taking Harbor down. That's a good trade. 3v2 now. Into towards that post run. Should be able to win this out as long as they do not miss out those shots. But again, how we kill Last John Viper win this out? VLT! He, take, he gets taken down, he's going to trash to take Beast Boy, but the trade is quickly going to come into play from Trash and the round. It's going to go in their favor yet again. This time, this somehow won out on that on their anti-eco. And now, it is going to force the side of Zadis to go for a save. That could strengthen their lead to 9-6. to six. For now it's 8 to 6, it's the second round, um, this is what tells me a lot when we're, when I'm playing personally. It's the second round, right? It's fine if you lose a pistol and lose a round after that, but if you lose the second round, it just uh, kind of messes up the momentum, kind of messes up the mental state. Yes, he loses the shorty, one shot, gets a kill on his face, walk off. Now with the spike, being carried, being planted. By the wing Spike this planted. This might be a bonus fire retake, which is close to impossible with these positions. Toxin screen down. And it seems difficult to be honest. VLT just trying to creep his way in. This is affecting the smoke pushing out gets the info. But how are they going to get the diffuse in? Everyone's standing in long. They need to dump a lot of utility. Last player standing. Gets another pick. 
The Zerst realty remaining with a shorty in hand. Little would he be able to do. Actually get one of them down with the knife out. And Frost is there to welcome him. Nine, six. Just one round away from the double digit, but the operator now comes into play. This could be the round that Zardis have been waiting for. Nine to six. This has to be a four by winning round for the Saro defenders. Otherwise, it's all Primas and Dusser as they will be getting the double hit goal. And here, the attackers. I feel that the defenders they need to go aggressive flanks. Or at least have that kill that posted very good. Like, look at this. Kill is on A. And there are three more players playing towards that RK area. That is just not mm. nice. As awesome AK. It almost gets taken down. Shoot and you'll get a kill. Oh, oh, oh. oh, 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 oh. almost. <laughs> that is true. And there we go. It's being hit. He pushed back, does not know that Arbor is there, just get shot in with that spectre. What is the other person in? The heaven. One shot in the meantime, takes space walker out, no more flashes to work with. We've just got your double controller and a sentinel to go in for that retake, no more duelist to create the space either. Frash is just holding such a nasty angle in a crossfire with Radiant on that harbor. I will that more. One more step and you'll be vulnerable, he definitely is. Frash takes Killjoy out, that's gonna be VLT. Taking crash down, so they finally got the side control, but no control towards the long smoke and the white wall. Oh, yeah. that block in away. One he goes in. Remaining. Oh my goodness, the play has been made Astra. What Last a timing. Standing. What's going to be another snake fight? And the timing is just not there. VLT takes him down. Does he get the defuse? 0.23 is the difference between a 7 and 9 and a 10 and 6. And it's 10 and 6 we see on board. Oh my god. Here. How did that happen at the end? He almost had time there though, but it did not work out. Unfortunate as they are going in for a timeout. What do you think they're talking about here? I mean, for now it just feels like everything just going south. They tried everything, but nothing's working for them. Oh, that was so very close, man. Could have gone anywhere. And now probably they're questioning, do they force this round or do they go in for a full save and just an 11th on board for King Kang? That is what's going on to their mind at this point. Because they do not have the creds. Yeah, they don't have creds. But again, if they force this round yeah. and they lose, yeah. they're basically giving the match point as well in the hands of King Kang and that's a pretty tough decision to make but I think so they're probably going to go in for a save and it's a very good timeout, you know to break the momentum of King Kang the way that they've been winning those rounds time and time again I think so it's the previous round was extremely solid they won the fights at the end of the day it was Literally a 3v5 retake if I'm not wrong and that too into that heavy cross but still they somehow I'm managed out. to get all of that and almost got the defuse in but again we're gonna go in out. round 17 everyone on King Kang creeping towards the end oh wow wait what was after doing out in the open there I am not sure but one shot is already on site getting the entry as well will be spotted out jet here to a dart but that's a plant already in under 10 seconds that is just absurd they're just running into the site and they're just giving away the site for free here the defenders are out do you be take this yes the wall will be coming in but the viper's coxie screen is not going to be good enough that is true and one shot is not stopping literally one shotting everyone and crash and harbor finally picks up the pace and finishes out the lineup of zadis that's 11th on board now so again it's there's just one round away from match point and I just want to have a look at the economy because I know it seems to be entirely broken Here. for the side of Zardis. Since I can see a Marshall, a few Careful. classics to work with, they'll probably go for a Stinger maybe or a Spectre Half Shield, but no utilities at all in hand. Just a turret for Killjoy and that's about it. While we see the ultra rotations coming in, they've got the Lockdown, they've also got the Cosmic Divide along with 
Vipers pet. Pro dep though. Fine, awesome pro. Giving one a lot of first class pro dep's easiest kill. Hex him out, but do we really expect the two man push coming in from double doors? He kind of do and quickly retreats back to safety, making sure that he does not give up on this number advantage that he has. And look at that wiper wall as well as harbor wall. Just does not provide any room to work with for Addy. They have a marshal in hand, but what do they do with it? Oh, on the side, two people coming in from that backstab. Finally, get that one thing. Good headshot coming in from Asa. Force out Jen oh. towards the backside as well. Sky still creeping towards the side from me. They're getting hit with the directional, but this is a 2v3. Now, will they be able to win it out? Sticker in hand. Try to get one classic pick, but Harbor seals the deal along with Beast Boy as the both. Have the Here's vandal advantage match and then move to the match point please show me the buy oh my god that round was so chaotic i am not really sure why but the the, the lockdown initiation was kind of too late it felt like you know he could have come in a little earlier because there was already flank there coming in he could have asked for a bit of help on towards mid so they can actually protect the lockdown but it is 12 to 6 right now three ultimates available they do have the blade storm the reckoning and the viper spit how are they planning to do this they're actually just rushing oh, it down to where the ready. main one to quickly get up back one shot off that's the duelist out of the picture no one to open the site no one to create that space that's a very good pick off coming in for the side of zadis the one that they needed in a long while they finally got that first blood in the round they have trash they have trash but there's oh. also harbor who is always there to go for the fight and cross gets a kill on the astro and there you go he goes now healing beast boy as the beast boy this game's over there's just absolutely no way the retake can be done one kill and maybe space Waller can get the uh, seekers oh. but harbor he's in a great spot Knife in hand Miles will be taken down, but one. again the seekers. Okay, it can. It's still doable. It's gonna give the position. Kill Jamal take this one down. Viper is right in front of him. It will fall. It comes down to a 1v1, and the spray from Brash is win. good enough. Skywalker could not win out that sky duel, and that's 13 to 6. 6 HP is the difference between another chance and the map end. And that's the game going in for Kang Kang. We expected the game to go all the way to OT. Somehow ended up in an anticlimactic way, but still being so very dramatic towards the end. Every single round was just so close. Could have gone anywhere. And look at the first blood onto the hands of Radiant. Five first bloods. As a controller, <laughs> that's basically all you're going to ask him to do. I mean, he's, he has done everything. I mean, look at the scoreboard. Two controllers sitting on top. One and two positions. And then it is, I mean, uh, the Jets are not even in the picture. Yes, the Jet on the side of defenders. Uh, the one shot actually has the, um, has four first bloods. Awesome AK. He struggled, to, he struggled at the start, but then he did pick it up. Beach Boy did not have to do a lot. His only objective, his only motive and its responsibility, as a matter of fact, was to plant the spike. And that's what he did. He got the defuse as well. Had tangible wingman. His positioning was great as well. The dizzy usage was good. Hence, the nine assists. But it was a great game. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of feel bad. Because, once again, at the start, they did have a couple of disconnections here and there. Both the, both the teams having minor, minor, you know, disconnections, minor interruptions. But at the end, they did try to put up a better fight. But this... Jet and Harbor, they were just too good. Indeed, I mean, this just combination was immaculate. You, you we're talking about how well he's get he's played. He's got those frags, twenty nine pickoffs, twelve finish, you know, twelve deaths, and only two assists. But still, you see the way how everything was set up. One shot, jumping towards the side, creating the space after Prash got the trailblazer as well as the flash in with Prodep using his Viper Walls perfectly and Beast Boy just throwing his wingman out to go in for that plant. That was just a perfect combination coming in from King Kang. And honestly, if we are talking about Zadis as well, we did see some amazing Ashrobs coming in. Even Lockdown invested by RN. It was on point. VLT got a 
couple of great frags. He got those important frags as well, while awesome AK on that operator was also pretty decent. They still somehow managed to get something on board. Space Walker tried to go in with his flashes, helped his teammate out as well, but it's just the fact that the combination coming in from King Kang was just a little bit better as compared to the combos on Zadis. But again, you either win the game or you learn from it. So yes, it is a win for King Kang, but it is a great learning experience for the side of Zadis. And again, that was an insane match. We did expect a best of three, but because of some technical... It down to only a best of one. But boy, we were served with a treat. Edge, I enjoyed it a lot. What about you? I mean, I had fun as well. I mean, uh, we started off with, you know, the game going either side. It was like 0-4. I mean, we started off with 2-1 as a matter of fact, but then the rollback did come into play and it was 0-4 and then we were back to 4-4. It was pretty close up until the side switch, but once the side switch happened, I don't know, King Kong, they turned up the heat. They went on full force and they secured the win 13-6. to They played brilliantly. They they were just confident with no sentinels as well. I guess, uh, yeah, you can make it work if your harbor is, you know, is on fire. I guess he is the MVP of the matchup as well. Radiant, he was just on fire. Not just, uh, you know, in terms of entering, not just in terms of kills, but his ability usage were also re was also True. really good on that harbor. And that gecko, I still feel like that secondary gecko was only used for the, for the wingman and the plant. But I still think you can replace the gecko with a sentinel. But... I mean, well, why fix something that isn't broken, right? If it's working, it's working. So congratulations to King Kang. They have um, secured themselves the first spot. Tough luck for Zaddy, but a second place is still, uh, you know, still better than nothing. Indeed. And again, unfortunate for Zaddy's, but still it's a very good learning experience. And King Kang, there's the victory post coming in from the boys. And the win goes to the team. That was it, guys. Thank you so very much for joining another day at Score College Gaming Club. It was powered by Gigabyte. The beverage partner was Mountain Dew. And these people were definitely drinking some of that because they were moving forward. They had absolutely no idea what scary things are. They had no idea about that. They just knew that there's victory in front of them. Cybersecurity partner was Casper Sky, making sure that every system was secured perfectly, while the accessory partner was Belkin. And they've got some amazing accessories. You definitely want to check them out. While the gaming headset, providing the perfect sound of where the person is coming from, was given by Sony Enzone. That's a word for our sponsors as well, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been your Caster Scared Yet. Alongside me, it's Edge. We're going to catch you at another day on Score College Gaming Club. Till then, stay tuned. डर सबको लगता है कला सबका सुखता है पर डर से डरोगे तो कुछ बड़ा कैसे करोगे तो ड्यू उठा और हिम्मत का घूंट लगा एयरक्राफ्ट टू इनकमिंग वी हैव हिट इन एयर पॉकेट Mountain Dew, dar ke aage, jeet hai.